Hi everyone, so this video is going to be somewhat semi-scientific and it is on aquarium um, catfishes, a siluriforms being the proper word, siluriform being the order of fishes that is all catfish, there isn't any out of that or other fish within, so it's monophyletic as we call it. Um, so the first fact is catfishes are scaleless, they do not have scales and this is a defining feature of siluriforms, there are other defining features um, but this is kind of like scales generally are sort of plating that comes out of the skin and to fit, um, the only um, siluriforms that do have scale like structures would be your um, lower carda D or well, Lorcardae, um, Calicthidae, and the similar related um, families within siluriforms. These actually have what is called dermal plating. It is not scales at all. Instead, it is um, sort of bony structures underneath the skin that the skin is on top of. So that's the difference between sort of the scales and the dermal plates. The scales go out of the skin, the dermal plating is kind of like underneath. I kind of say it's kind of like an exoskeleton in a way. And these are real solid plates on the fish. And a lot of people say they can't be catfishes, they have scales, or they look totally different, or people think they have scales, they do not have scales. But it doesn't mean they're more prone to issues with treatments than any other fish. But it depends on your beliefs and opinions on that topic. The next fact is tasteability. So siluriforms are one of the most like powerful will have one of the most powerful taste abilities in the animal kingdom. They can have more than 100,000 to 175,000 taste buds on their barbels. And it can be, the taste buds tend to be external on Laurel Cardi and it helps them locate food. And a lot of, cat, a lot of fishes do have abilities to locate food of barbels and stuff, but catfishes t can take it to the real extreme. So you see those real long barbels and some like Ictaluridae is kind of an example that is popping to my head but you might see it in others especially if they're ones that root through the substrate so they're probably using these um, barbels to um, locate food and it's kind of like underneath the substrate was if they just had stuck their head, head under they might not be able to locate it as well if you compare to humans, humans are only have 10,000 but usually only 5,000 working taste buds so that's a lot less and it's how catfish probably see their world. Their world is probably, well it depends on the species, murky, dark, deep. It's not really ideal if you're someone, something that needs to see. Um, and that can be important with other sensory abilities that they have, such as the fish, a general fish's ability to sense vibrations and movement within the water. So, yeah, and it is absolutely superior and it's how catfishes can find food so fast. You just plonk it in and they know it's there. There's most likely they could taste it quite quickly. So the next one is one that you might have heard of. A catfishes actually have one of like a very advanced ability to use electrosensitivity. So electro so catfishes have not all members have it, but ampullary electroreceptors. And their sister taxa is actually from notiforms, and these are the knife fishes, um, the South American. I don't believe there are any elsewhere true knife fishes. There are more Memoridae Day relatives in Africa and Asia. Um, but yeah, so these, their organs in um, the catfishes are more for sort of low level electrosensitivity, um, but the gymnotiforms take it to a whole other level. The catfish that has probably the most powerful electrosensitivity is uh, Malo, Malotirius. Tir, uh, so these are the electric catfishes and it's the genera, mostly not all members within that genera though. And they can generate up to around sort of 300 to 400 volts. So it's not enough to kill you not nearly enough, but it will provide quite a shock. So you can see plenty of videos of people online picking them up and getting a hell of a lot of shock. And they are probably using this more as a defence. I can't see them using it to catch their prey, unlike other taxa, which um, 
some of the knife fishers will use it to catch prey, to communicate, to ta they take it to a different level, whereas I guess where gymnotiforms use electricity to see their world, Siloforms use a lot of taste, um, taste abilities, and they eat usually, well, depends on <laughs> different things, their niches are very different. So a lot of, one thing that people really don't seem to know is that catfish live a long time. They can live anywhere between decades and onwards. So I always say that those panak you see in the rivers, the big ones, um, they are more than a few decades old, I think. I think they're at least 50 years old. Just because of their diet means they're probably actually not that fast growing. They're probably quite slow growing. And this means that they will require a slow time to sort of grow and reach sexual maturity will be a lot later, probably around sort of where most law cards take around sort of three to five years. They'll probably take about 10. But in captivity, it's difficult to say because stunting is extremely common. And most catfish in captivity do not live that long. Even corridor should live at least 10 years. Most law cards should live at least 10 to about 30, depends on which species and size and stuff. And they will be reproductive during a lot of that time period. So, Catfish is a massive taxa. It contains, I think it's 3,000 species. I cannot remember off the top of my head. Lorcade contains 1,001 species, and that's just one family within Siluriforms. So, catfish can be as small as Tritcher, Tritcher, Mycidae. I can never pronounce this uh, family. So, this contains your famous Candiru. Um, the famous one that swims up the urethra, and they could be as small as 1.2 millimeter standard length. So, excluded tail, you might add a few millimeters on for that, and that is extremely like small. But then you get members as large as Silurus glanis, which can reach up to four meters long standard length. Although I think this is a bit of a debated one because when we talk about the largest freshwater fishes, Silurus glanis is a freshwater fish. It is the European catfish found in Eastern Europe. Um, Pangasidae specifically reaches large sizes anywhere from around one, 1.5 meters uh, for Pangasidon hypothalamus, around two meters for Pangasius uh, sanguorsi, and then for uh, I think it's Pangasidon gigas, which is your Mekong catfish, they can reach up to three meters or more. And these are shoaling catfish, and you see them not. Pangasodon, um, not Pangasodon gigas in the trade, but you will see other members really common. And these are big fish, so if you think that they're in the running for the largest cat, well, the w largest freshwater fish, that says a lot because you've got sturgeon against them, and you've got um, arapaima. Arapaima are monster fish, and arapaima are gorgeous and threatened, but Pangasidae also is. Pangasidae contains um, Pangasius sanctuorsi, as I said, and they're in the top 100 most threatened species, and that includes plants. And if it gives you an idea, tigers don't even reach that. The ri um, white rhino, black rhinos, they're not on that list. But this fish you could buy as a pet and kill, most likely, because they're not suitable even in public aquaria. You could get, and it's no different from only a tiger. So it gives you an idea that catfish is a really varied group of fish. It is vast and there's so many different adaptations from electricity, their size, um, morphology ranges a lot. And they have taken over almost every continent. There's Europe that has one native species but there's probably plenty of Ictaluridae around. Then you have, um, there's plenty in Asia native to different places in Asia. I think Oceania would definitely, um, with um, Papua New Guinea, definitely has some. I'm not sure about Australian species. There's definitely species in Africa, you've got Synodontis. And then you've got species in South and North America. North America has your native um, Ictaluridae, um, which is your channel cats and bullheads. You don't really see them in the UK, they are banned here. Um, and then down to South America, that's where diversity, I think, really takes to its own in catfishes. Anyway, thank you for watching.